In the previous chapter, I talk about how I spent one year creating a 2D frame by frame animation. It's going to be a year now since that animation was finished. I didn't release it immediately back then because I hated it. <laughs> I had to spend one year working on this for me not to like it. So I sat down and made a list with a compilation of all the things that I didn't like of this animation so I could work on fixing those things. And in chronological time, it was five months from March to July, but I took a couple of months to travel overseas to visit some old friends and to see the boot of my Icelandic team of Ebolites. We have an app for, for children to help the children to practice math. You can download it on the Apple Store and they have been making an amazing job promoting the video game that we have been working on since 2017 and it's, it was amazing to see all the illustrations that I made back in the day for the game like in a, this big format, you know, it was super, super lovely, super exciting. It was just like three, two months fixing things here and there. Some of the fixes were just technical mistakes like shadows being misplaced or flickering of certain frames because I overlapped in the timeline the outline layer with the same outline layer. This small framing here gets doubled so it looks like the outline is thicker than it actually is and when the animation runs it kind of flickers. Some other fixes were just color adjustments, some others were fixing details in the background or certain textures and certain elements, sometimes the entire background, some others were just timing. <laughs> it actually didn't fix everything in the list because some of the mistakes were when I look at them, I thought, okay, fixing this is going to be so time consuming and it's a mistake that probably no one is going to notice, you know? So I thought, like, uh, okay, I think it's going to stay there and I'm going to cross fingers that people just don't dissect my animation frame by frame in a high enough resolution for them to notice. And actually, now that I watch the two videos, the first one that I finished in March and the second one that I finished in July, and I put them like side by side, with maybe the exception of the scenes where I rework the entire background, you can barely tell the difference, you know? And I was like, it's like all this time, all this work, all this was fixing this, and it's not even noticeable. So it's like, Brilliant. Because you know, you can you can probably tell that there is a difference in rendering and quality from this and this. But if you watch both scenes on your phone, which you are probably doing, you're probably not going to even notice the difference because you are not watching it at 4K, you're watching it like super small. So yeah, that was unfortunate when I decided to make this second row of changes that took me two months. But it's Kind of a blessing when I decided to reskin everything using AI because there was a drastic decrease in quality. I re-rendered everything at HD, I reskinned at HD, and then I took the final reskins to Adobe Premiere to upscale there to 4K. It was not exactly the upscaling that was the problem, it was the fact that I decided <laughs> and I know that a lot of professional animators are going to burn me on the stake for this, but I decided that I was going to make the animation 60 frames per second instead of 24. I know, I know. Uh, I went against all common wisdom. I I do that a lot, as you, you probably know that. Adobe Premiere comes with it, its own plugin that allows you to create in-betweens. It's something called optical flow. It's fantastic. Actually, if you do stop motion, you're probably going to love that particular feature on Adobe Premiere because it improves the flow of the overall animation. And you're probably going to find uh, optical flow very useful for your projects. So 
yeah, I use that. But the thing with optical flow is that the more complex your scene is and the more different one frame is to the next, the more it struggles trying to fill on the in-betweens. So you're going to get a lot of glitchy stuff. And for some scenes, I import 24 frames, made the in-betweens, and then I start cleaning each one frame by frame. For some scenes I did that, for others I didn't have the time. So the fact that most of you are going to see the animation on the phone is a blessing for me because you are not going to see those glitches. But if you want to spot those glitches, you can try it as a sport, grab your largest monitor and watch it on 4K. So yeah, I finished all the animation on July 2023 and then since this was meant to be promo for the book I wrote, I didn't release it right away, I paused it because that book was not released yet. So I took the next month just to arrange everything regarding to the book. I had to check the ISBN on the platforms where I will upload it. Uh, create brand new socials exclusively for the book alone, get materials to get it registered and to get copyright on it, getting a website, setting up a newsletter and all the things that you need to do as an author. I'm going to make another video talking about that journey specifically because it is another kind of worms on its own. So yeah, when I was arranging all that, the debate about AI was hotter than ever. At the very beginning, I was actually very in line with the anti-AI movement and I was just debating people back and forth on Twitter just like everyone else and my main motivation to start exploring the technology actually came out of precisely that discourse you know because at some point I debated with somebody who told me that I was utterly clueless about how the technology worked to their credit they were not wrong I hadn't actually explored or dived deep on how it worked so i start doing that basically just to to make my arguments stronger you know and while i started doing that i realized a lot of things the overall idea that i had of how they work was indeed inaccurate and the more that i start thinking it's like oh, oh okay this is not what i thought it was maybe this idea that it is stealing is not exactly correct and don't get me wrong there, there are bad uses but not all the uses are bad and yeah I mean some people are using it to replace art altogether but you as an artist you can also use it to replace tedious boring tasks while keeping the fun ones and even like, like it is it is my case, it has enabled me to pursue interests that I didn't before because I didn't have the time or the resources like this animation. That was the reason why I didn't start with this project back in the day. And that is the reason why I decided to make it a book, because from all the options that I wanted to do, a book was the one that was less time consuming and it still was time consuming and resource demanding, you know? Back in the day when I was thinking to make it a graphic novel, uh, checking about the opportunity to put it on webtoons, and I started researching um, how the process was, and I was discouraged because I bumped into a lot of testimonials of webtoons authors saying that it was super exploitative. I mean, not exploitative in the sense that you have a boss that is profiting of, of you, although some argue that the webtoon sort of does that. I have no idea if, if it is true. I, I just recall reading about that sort of. But the main complaint was um, that it was a lot of work and a lot of effort for the reward that you get. Actually, that's kind of like the reason why I decided back in the day to be an, an illustrator in the first place. The amount of time and effort that it takes you to make an illustration, put it against the amount of money that you can charge for it, compare the same situation with a comic book page or with a minute animation, it is way more convenient to be an illustrator in that sense. So that's why I chose to be an illustrator. 
that I was interested from the very beginning in comic books, in animation, in writing. And now that artificial intelligence can help you optimize certain processes, I feel like exploring animation again, you know, because now it's not as time constraint as it was before. Look, I'm not trying to convince anyone of anything. I already have my dosage of that. And if you are really deeply invest ideologically and maybe even monetarily on a certain idea, and if you have been militant about that idea in the past, there is nothing that I can tell you that is going to change your point of view. You know that. I know that. So, so yeah. I took four months to risk in everything. First, I took the scenes that I have to the animated before, and then I rendered them frame by frame in After Effects at a smaller scale, just HD, which is half the size of 4K, because that was the most that my computer could handle at the time, and it was also the resolution at which the stable diffusion model that I was using at the time worked the best. So I craft frames that I consider to be key for each movement and I will translate the style from 2D to my usual realistic illustration using the image to image function inside the stable diffusion. And then once that I have these frames as reference, I use Epsynth to translate those keyframes into the whole animation. Once I have the scene completely translated, I will grab it to Adobe Premiere and then use the optical flow feature that I told you just to fill on the in-betweens. And then, once I have that ready, I will check frame by frame to see if there were no flickering or stuff that needed to be corrected. I will correct those mistakes and then I will import it back to Adobe Premiere to upscale in there to 4K and then back to After Effects to make all the compositing of all the scenes together. And this is just a brief description of what I did because of course it's more complicated than that. AI is not perfect, AI doesn't think like a human does. By example, what I've seen does is painting over exactly like a TikTok filter, you know? When you put a TikTok filter, it kind of like identifies your eyes and puts your lashes, identifies your lips and puts your lipstick. If you, if you move, especially the early versions, if you did stuff like this, AI tends to do something like that. AI can perfectly put on top of um, the 2D character this 3D rendering that is closer to my illustration realistic style, the moment the character turns around, AI no longer knows that it needs to apply this to, to the set as well. So sometimes kind of like, some funky things happen, so you need to give it the instruction because AI is like an alien that have no clue of anything. It's like super intelligent for certain things, but lacks the information, the contextual information that it needs to do that thing well. So you need to be there to instruct it how to do things. I was in the middle of editing with this technique when Picalabs came into fruition. So I paid for a month to do my trailer with that. <sighs> no. <laughs> Runway is impressive when you look at the final example that are all over the internet with the amount of control that you got, at, at least at the moment that I, I use it. It was near to know. At the very beginning, I used just the text to video, and the text to video gave me like some funky, funky stuff. So I went to Stable Diffusion, I created an image that was going to be the base image, and then I fitted it to Picalabs for it to make a movement of this image, and then it was quite disastrous. It's like it made with the camera whatever it wanted, it didn't have good timing, it changed the features. I can't use this and attempting to fix it is going to take me way much more time. I had this scene of a still of a tree and I just wanted a simple zoom in. Very simple, just a zoom in, just a zoom in. And it will generate a 
bird flamingo thingy. It's like, what is this guy doing in here? I mean, it's like, why? And the bad thing is that in your subscription, you have limited credit. I ran out of all my credits just in the first scene. I think I made like two or three, not because I finished the first one, but because I, I realized that I was not going to achieve a result there. I kind of like got a couple of things that I didn't use in my trailer at all because it just, it wasn't usable. I grabbed a couple of those to make the shorts for the TikTok account of the book and I use them there, but still I didn't use them exactly as Picolabs gave them to me exactly. I made modifications and After Effects afterwards. So yeah, I came back to make mostly manual work and I finished with that task a couple of weeks ago. And the result of it is what you are going to watch next. So without further ado, here it comes, the final trailer of my book. Still a lot of errors, but I hope you will notice them. Thank you for watching and have a fantastic night. There are girls going down about Faith's age. Never to be seen again. What do you mean? There is nothing south of the pipes but death and the seas. Why would anyone want to go down there?